Think like a scientist. Animal adaptations. NSTA kids. Adaptations. Adaptations are changes that happen over a long period of time in body structures of animals and plants. These changes help the animals and plants survive. The leaf-tailed gecko blends into its environment of dead leaves. This protects it from being found. Can you see how its tail has the color and shape of a dead leaf? Physical adaptations such as color and shape help animals survive in different environments. Charles Darwin was a naturalist who studied adaptations. He lived in the 1800s. In one of his studies, he observed the beaks of birds called finches. At right is a picture of Charles Darwin around the time he was studying finches. Below are drawings from Darwin's journal. Notice that the birds ate different things depending on the shape of their beaks. One, ground finch. Two, medium ground finch. Three, small tree finch. And four, the warbler finch. The ground finch is the largest of Darwin's finches. It eats on the ground. Since it has such a large, strong beak, it can eat harder things, like the seeds pictured here. This medium ground finch, it also eats on the ground. Its beak is large enough to eat seeds, but it can also eat flowers, buds, and occasionally insects. Some of these finches eat insects and some eat plants. This is the small tree finch. Since it has a smaller beak and eats small insects like ants, crickets, and cockroaches. And then this is the warbler finch. It uses its long skinny beak to probe within bark and vegetation, looking for spiders and insects. Here are the beaks of some other birds. Look closely at the beaks. Do you notice how they are different? Tearing. This type of beak is like a hook. It allows a bird to grip and tear meat into smaller bites. Probing. This type of beak is like a drill. It allows a bird to get to food in hard to reach places. Cracking. This type of beak is thick and strong. It allows a bird to break hard food. Scooping. This type of beak is like a net. It allows a bird to scoop fish out of water. Look at the beaks of the hawk, woodpecker, and cardinal and pelican. Two of them have beaks similar to the finches. Can you pick which ones? What do you think they eat? Let's see if we're correct. The warbler finch, hawk, and woodpecker. The hawk beak does not look like any finch's beak. Hawks eat small animals like mice, rabbits, and they have these curved beaks that help tear meat. The woodpecker has a beak similar to the warbler finch. They eat mostly insects and seeds. They get their name from their ability to drill holes in trees and wood to access their food source. Very similar to the warbler finch. The ground finch. Cardinal. The cardinal has a similar beak to the ground finch. They eat mainly seeds and fruit. And then of course, the pelican, a beak that does not look like any finch's beak. Pelicans use their long beak and expanding throat to scoop fish out of water.
Ooh, yeah. not a bird. <laughs> How do teeth help animals eat? Look at the mouths of these animals. What do you think they eat? The lion. Horse. A lion eats meat. The sharp canines and incisors are used for tearing the meat into bites that can swallow. Canines, incisors. Now this is a horse. It eats grass and other plant materials. Its incisors are used for cutting plant material and it has molars for grinding. Incisors, canines, molars. Some adaptations help animals move better in the places where they live. In what environment would you expect to see a foot like this and why? That's right. And how would a foot like this be useful and why? What do you think this animal uses its feet to do? And what about this foot? <laughs> Did you say a water environment like a lake, pond, or river? That's right, ducks have web feet to help them swim. Now goats, they have hooves to help them walk on rocky ground. Hooves help goats keep their balance and protect their feet on rocky ground. A bat's long toes help it to grip surfaces when it lands and hangs upside down. The elephant is a heavy animal, so having broad feet helps distribute its weight evenly. These feet also help when walking on uneven ground. An elephant's color is also an adaptation. It helps elephants blend into its environment. An adaptation that helps a plant or animal blend into its surroundings is called camouflage. Many types of animals use color and shape to help camouflage themselves. Can you think of some animals that use camouflage? There are insects in each of these pictures below, but can you find them? This orange winged grasshopper is hiding among sand and pine needles to avoid being eaten. Its coloration pattern is spotted and looks like grains of sand. Can you believe how much this stick insect looks exactly like a twig on a tree? Its joints look like where a twig meets the bigger branch and the body itself, it's, it's a different shade of brown to match the tree. This slant face grasshopper camouflages itself into green grass. Notice the different greens and browns on the grasshopper's body that look like the greens and browns of the grass. Now you can see the hawk moth. Its shape and coloration pattern look like the bark of the tree. And a praying mantis waits for its prey. The green color and thin body help it camouflage itself against thin branches and green leaves. The animals on the last three pages are insects. Insects are animals that have six legs, a pair of antenna, and a hard exoskeleton. Many insects use camouflage to protect themselves from being eaten. We'll take one more look. I'm using camouflage right here. Quite impressive. These other animals use camouflage too. Try to find them.
This is a wraparound spider. Its color is similar to the branch, but it also has a twig-like body structure on its back. A tawny owl sits on its perch, tree perch. Oh, the color and pattern of its feathers blend into the bark of the tree. This goldenrod crab spider looks somewhat like the flower it is sitting on by blending in with both the white petals and the yellow pollen. It has a better chances of catching unexpected prey. The common octopus is able to change the color and smoothness of its skin so that it can blend into its environment. The mossy frog is named after its method for camouflaging itself against moss. This bird is a long-tailed nightjar. It almost can't even be seen on the ground, covered with dead leaves. These are white-tailed deer. There is one still hidden on the right. This wolf's fur looks a lot like the grass it is lying in. This will help it keep hidden. And this red sea walkman, spiny devilfish, can not only hide on the gravelly seafloor, but it also has sharp spines along its back that contain toxic venom. Don't accidentally step on them. Ooh. Some adaptations protect animals from being eaten. Some adaptations help animals hunt. Predators hunt for food. They eat prey. This armadillo has hard armor for protection. The armadillo can roll up, protecting the soft parts of its body with the armor so that it is not eaten by a predator. Porcupines have sharp quills. Ooh, that will hurt anything it tries to eat. If armadillos and porcupines did not have these protections, they would more easily become prey for hungry predators. Owls and lions are predators. Owls have great eyesight because their big forward facing eyes, they can spot food from very far away. This lion has sharp claws and teeth. It uses them to hunt. Most predators have eyes that face forward. This helps them judge the distance between themselves and their food. Most prey have eyes on the side of their heads to give them a better view of any approaching predators. Study the special adaptations of the animal below. Is this animal a predator or prey? Fur color. White fur helps the animal blend into its environment when looking for food. Big teeth. This animal has many sharp teeth to rip tough meat. Strong legs. Strong legs help this animal run, swim, and jump. Large paws help the animal chase after other animals. So is this animal a predator or a prey? Predator or prey? These polar bears, they are predators. Their white fur keeps them hidden when hunting for food. Their large paws help them to walk in deep snow or swim in the water, and their big teeth help tear meat. Thick fur helps keep the bear warm. Small ears reduce the amount of body heat lost by the polar bear. Polar bears live in cold places. They also have other special adaptations for living in this environment. Blubber. Blubber is a layer of fat all over the body under the skin. Blubber keeps the polar bear warm. Blubber can be used for energy when the bear cannot find anything to eat. Fur on the bottom of feet. These polar bears have fur between the pads of their feet. This keeps their feet from slipping on the ice. Large ears. Its big ears help it cool down. Heat can escape through these ears. And the fur on the bottom of these feet, this rabbit's feet, 
help it also from slipping, but protect its feet from the hot sand as well. And that small nose, that small nose prevents too much water loss. If you have ever felt a, a dog or cat's nose, you may know it feels wet. The cottontail cannot lose too much water since it lives in the desert, so it has a very small nose. Now this type of rabbit, this animal sleeps during the day and it's awake at night. Every now and then it can be seen in the daytime. Is this rabbit a predator or prey? This is the desert cottontail. It lives in the desert. And it's prey to larger animals like coyotes and hawks. Hmm. Most deserts are hot and dry during the day, so this rabbit also has other special adaptations for its environment. The large ears help the rabbit hear better. Since their ears can swivel, rabbits can hear other animals coming from different directions. And the eyes on the side of its head? That allow it to see things coming from the side and from behind. And the fur color, of course, helps the rabbit hide from other animals by blending into its environment. And those strong legs, they help it run and jump to escape. This is a rattlesnake. Is it a predator or a prey? And what evidence do you have for your choice? Look at its color. Do you think it lives in a hot, rocky environment or a cold, snowy environment? Look at the color and pattern. Brown color and pattern help it blend into its environment. We know this because the color blends in with the brown and tan rocks and sand. Ooh, and the fangs with the venom. It's fangs and venom help it capture food and attack things that could hurt it. And the tail rattle. The rattlesnake has hard segments on its tail that make noise. This noise happens when it shakes. The rattle warns predators that it can bite them. The rattlesnake is both predator and prey. Some of its adaptations help it hunt, such as the fangs, and some help with protection, like its eyes being located on the sides of its heads. There are so many different predators and prey in many different environments. Animal adaptations.